Hey folks, a little bit late start today. Been doing some editing. Um, had the little baby chicks out this morning. You guys can see them too much. A little bit of an update on them. Kind of raise. Can raise this up. They are getting big and they're wanting to fly. I moved them outside today, get them out in the sun. They've been inside the camper and uh, they're growing fast. They'll be about three weeks old uh, this week. So really growing fast. And I think I've got it down to which ones are hens. The three in the middle I think are hens. The other two I think are toms, but we'll see. I'd like to end up with at least the majority of them being hens. We're going to know Harbor Freight trailer today. I've got to uh, put a front and a gate on the back. It's going to be multi-purpose. We're going to haul wood in it. Um, one of the things I'm going to talk about in realities and homesteading, you have to have a diversified income. You've got to have multiple income streams, not just one thing. Uh, and if you're going to build a homestead, you've really got to have things that kind of help your general uh, population, your general area, the people that live around you. Uh, if not, you're going to have a hard time. Now, there is, there's all different kinds of income streams. There's, there is online income streams, and that's great if you can do that. Um, there are handyman type income streams. They're selling, uh, trading, uh, this camera I'm talking to you on right now is, is a new camera. Uh, I got it trading supplies that I probably wouldn't use for it. Um, there's just a ton of different ways you can make money out there. Some areas are better than others. It just really depends on uh, what area you're in in the country. Um, you, you've got to take and you've got to get out there and you've got to find those ways before you get here, before you get to your final destination of where you're gonna build your homestead. Make sure you've got that plugged in because if you go work a nine to five and you're building on raw land like we're doing, you're gonna have a hard time. Uh, if you have got an established house, an established place where you're just moving in, you're gonna start homesteading. And it really depends whether you're on grid or off grid. Uh, if you're on grid, it can be a little easier. You've got lights, you've got everything pre-done. Uh, you've got all the you know the amenities already done you're in good shape if not you're gonna have a harder time um, let me take and show you this this trailer what our plans are for it as a walk around and we'll go from there got the sides on here the reason I'm doing a four by eight is I can cut a cord of wood a cord of wood is four feet tall four feet wide and eight feet long that's exactly what this trailer is the bed space on it is is four by eight and these sides are four foot tall i've got to cut this piece of plywood in half put it on the front then i've got to build some type of gate got me some two befores here got my van up here with all my tools in it i'm gonna get the generator running i've got to charge some batteries uh, for my drills and then we are going to start uh, cutting a cord of wood and we're not going to do it just full on full time run hard unless there's a high demand uh, if we can get enough uh, firewood to help supplement our income that's what we'll do this is just another income stream it's not our constant income stream or our stable income stream our stable income stream is doing off-grid consultations um, fixing fence, building entryways, helping other homesteaders. That's our constant. I also train horses. Uh, and that, that's, a, that's a thing right there. If you're going to move out to an area, make sure you have a skill set. Uh, if you only have one skill set, make sure it's really important, like an electrician or a plumber uh, or something like that. If you don't have, you need to get those things or make sure you have an income stream that's going to take and work for you because 
it gets really hard if you have to drive, particularly where we're at, the cheaper the land, the farther from town you are. That's just a rule of thumb. So if you're working a nine to five minimum wage, it's going to be hard on you. If you're on a fixed income, it's going to be hard on you. Uh, some of the things I'm going to be talking about in the upcoming videos. Right now, I've got to take and get this plywood set up, get it cut in two, and then we're going to get this trailer fixed to where as I go, as I'm clearing fence row, as I'm cleaning up, I can cut up the dead wood, I can stack it in here, and we can have a cord of wood on here, put it up for sale, we can deliver it, have an extra income stream. Okay, I got my plywood set up to be cut. I've got those old metal uh, saw horses. Uh, me and Anna got those out of a dumpster. Uh, been almost <laughs> two years ago. But I use them quite often. See, I've got three of them set up under there. So I can cut this in two and it won't just pinch my saw blade. I got my four foot level on there. And that's exactly how wide, that's my four foot mark. That's exactly how wide the edge of my saw is. You can use a two before, you can use a, a level, you can use all kinds of things as a guide. Uh, when you're ripping plywood, I want it to look somewhat nice for for my trailer. I don't want it to be all jagged and crooked. And With a sidewinder, I have a hard time cutting a straight line. So now I'm gonna go over here and turn the generator on and get this cut as you can see I've got my batteries for my drills all set up here I've got my DeWalt and my Makita and I'm gonna get this generator started up we try to do this uh, when we're using a generator even at night if we're trying to watch a movie and our solar is just not uh, been bringing in that much power we'll start this up right then that's when we charge up our batteries so get this thing started get that board cut One of the good things about this is I can hang on to it. While I cut it, and don't just fall. I can talk over this uh, generator. One of the things I want, I want this to be as level as possible. Too many things in my pockets. I'm just gonna mark that right there. I'm gonna go inside run some screws in it, get this thing tightened down. So now I'm going to tie these corners together with another 2 before 
you can see when it's squared up it sits right on the edge of that plywood bottom and I went back this bed was coming loose and I put screws along the bottom and got it reattached because it was really loose all these bolts lost their nuts over over the years uh, now we had what two years so this bed uh, rack will help hold it down but I'm probably gonna have to put some bolts back in those holes I just hate crawling around the sand getting under there I may have to tip it up on its side and put those bolts back in there but I'm gonna put some two before's in here got it attached all the way down it's gonna make a really stout bed uh, we can stack wood in and if we need to we can throw a tarp over top of it and we can load sheep and goats in here got my back standards in I got them cut I need to attach this to it but at the same time I've got to figure out a way to make it to where I can take it out I'm gonna have to go down here to the tent see what kind of hardware I have I am going to do the same thing on the back that I did on the front a uh, little bit little bit still up in the air as to how I'm gonna make it latch but I'm gonna go down here and see what kind of hardware I got I've got buckets and totes of stuff down there I want this thing to be sturdy I am gonna tie the top together right across here uh, we'll have to duck under it when we're loading but it will keep this from flopping around we have our standards bolted into the frame so they're attached in they're attached in six places right now uh, in the front down the sides it's very stout I think it's gonna work just fine as long as we don't overload the sides and cause it to, to pooch out at the top I'm gonna put a two before on top of here uh, probably at least for a little ways right here just to throw a strap over so we can kind of keep it pulled together at the top I should have went ahead and made this go all the way up but I was a little short on two before's so I used what I had uh, a four foot two before is not long enough because you have to go down in the standard these are actually 52 these are just four foot so had to use what I had I had a bunch of four footers down there just odds and ends that would make four footers all right folks I got this to a point uh, I gotta go get something to eat. We're gonna go over to our neighbors and look at his horses I'm rushing around here trying to put everything up because it'll probably be dark when we get back uh, It's those horses that we're gonna be working with trying to take and find homes for I'm gonna Take and work with some of them. There's a, a man interested in one of the little mares uh, Gonna see what she knows. Uh, I haven't had my hands on them. Hopefully we can get her separated sorted out we haven't worked on that crowd yet but they say she's pretty tame so we're gonna go see um, that'll be another video I'm gonna show you what I got done so what I got I got these latches I'm gonna use these on the sides right here once I get the two befores up I got a bracket I just started it uh, tightening it down it's gonna help make this a lot stouter once I get it uh, on both sides that's the biggest problem uh, I just got to take and get it all latched down once you get the the back in and get it latched in I think it's gonna work out really nice uh, I don't want to rig it I want to make sure that when we're going down the road we're not uh, shaking this thing apart uh, this is only half inch plywood 
Uh, it won't take a whole lot of beating, but if we make it stout enough, I think it'll be okay. That's why I'm putting so much extra effort in with these brackets and latches and stuff. I don't want to just strap it together with straps. Uh, everything we've had on this thing so far has broke apart because the roads are so rough. I'll pick up on this tomorrow and see if we can't get it finished up. Maybe cut a little bit of wood, stack it in there tomorrow. Uh, I've got uh, to work on the sheep shelter. Uh, just tons of little projects that I got to do. But tomorrow we'll finish this up. Now on to go work with some horses. That's just the way it is on the homestead, especially our homestead. We just keep rolling.